What is happening guys? Welcome back to Redbeard's Garage and this is our Yerf Dog Spider Box that we're repowering with a YZ450 dirt bike engine. Now we got this frame off Facebook Marketplace for $150. We cut it apart, we made us a new roll cage and we turned it into a one seater chassis. We're repowering this with a YZ450 that has a high compression piston and a hot cam in it and some carb rework done. So it should put out a nice 55 to 60 horsepower. So in today's video, we're gonna get to building the rear suspension. We're gonna go with double A-arm rear suspension and Miata CV axles. So we gotta mount the spool up and get those A-arms built. But first we're gonna knock out some little odds and ends in the chassis, some braces and some ports, and then we'll get on to making that rear suspension. So I'm making this bracket that holds the bearing set up on this uh, rear spool. And I needed to add, so we're gonna have A-arms on this, so we need an upper A-arm link. We could run trailing arms. This frame is really set up nicely for trailing arms, but I haven't fully decided if I'm gonna do trailing arms or A-arms. A-arms is way faster and easier, and you get a true like tire travel in your suspension. Like they don't change caster camber or nothing like that. So I may go with A-arms, but we need if we do A-arms, we need an upper bar for our upper A-arm. So what I'm going to do is add a crossbar right here, and this is I measured 17 inch from the chassis back on each side and made my mark. Then with these centurial tools, we've shown these in the past, and it was super quick to do this. Basically, I made my mark at 17 inches on this tube from the rear of the chassis. And then I took this string line tool, used their magnets, everything shown on screen that we use in this little kit. And then basically took my angle finder and found out what angle this is. And you minus 90 degrees from whatever that reads. And this was 110. So that would have been a 20 degrees notch is what we need to do to meet this tube here. And then you put gator clips on the center of the tube on each side and if you measure from those two that's how long your overall piece of tube needs to be uh, so i cut a, a piece to that measurement and did a 20 degree notch on each side now how they have this set up is you're going to basically you know let's say this was 26 inches from gator clip to gator clip you're going to cut a piece of tube at 26 inches um, you're going to when you put it in your tubing notcher you want the center of the tube to meet the center of the uh, notcher uh, hole saw. I don't like to do it that way because it dulls your bit quite a bit more and I'll show you over here on the notcher. So this is set up at 20 degrees. If I put this in you can see it meets that notcher perfectly but I'm going to slide it back a little bit. So what they're saying is if this was a straight piece you would center you would make the center of this blade line up with the center of your tube. Only bad thing that's a roundabout right there that's a heavy notch to do which is going to dull your notcher down quite a bit 
So what I like to do is whatever my overall length is, I go ahead on one and a quarter, I go ahead and minus a half an inch off that. And then I set this in not just however deep. I like my notches to be about three eighths of a notch. So I set them in and notch it. You may have to trim a little bit, like do a second notch. But I hope that if you've notched tube, you know what I'm talking about. Like doing an aggressive notch like that, doles this down, the piece is hard to get out of the inside of the blade. So I always say, I personally minus a half inch and then just set my tube at three eighths of an inch in. Because I, I just don't like to, these things are like $7 a piece and I can normally build a whole entire chassis with one a hole saw. And if I was to do it that way, I feel like I wouldn't get as much life. But this was one notch. I didn't remeasure, didn't re-notch or anything. And look how good this fits in here. We slide that in. Now this is supposed to be the center of our tube. You see we're a hair bit off, but all I would have to do is take a blade thickness off and it would, I mean, that's perfectly fine because this isn't like have to be dead on that. But one notch, like one time doing it, that was super fast. So now I can clean this up, tack this in, and now I can put some down braces. And that's just gonna strengthen this whole engine cradle. But some braces that go from here up to this and notch those in on both sides. And then I'm either, even if I don't do A-arms, I'm still gonna add this because it's just strengthening all this and we won't get any kind of flexing. So let's proceed on so we can get ready to build our rear suspension. All right, so fast forward a little bit. We added this uh, one and a quarter little beam here. So this axle bearing is supported on three sides very heavily, you know, once it's fully welded. And we also machined up some two inch spacers to hold these exactly where I needed them. Uh, and we can either keep these or leave them in there. It doesn't really matter. But it's braced really well in the back, but the force is gonna wanna pull this you know frontwards so what i want to do is take this piece of one and a quarter and like notch it in from there to this crossbar here and that was a mother to make by the way anywho centurial also has these tools they they're tracer tools so you could find out you know how you need to if you don't have a notcher you could mark that on your tube and trace it out and cut it off with a grinder and have a perfect notch. Uh, I don't use them for that per se. I use them for round to square. So we're going to round from round to rectangle tubing. We have this insert here that holds this laser. And what we're gonna do is one side of this is small, one side is large. If you can tell, that's a larger diameter than that one. This is the smaller side is what we use on the chassis. I put that in backwards. So we're gonna drop this down in there and it shoves real nice and neat, real nice Clark. Sorry, I got boo-boos on my hand. So now we can turn that laser on and the new models have an on and off switch. The older models didn't, so you can see there. Oh, 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 I need to loosen it more. So you basically loosen it to turn it on. So the reason we need the laser is we're gonna to point to where we want our tube to end up with the laser and then we can notch it in. We're gonna point the laser where we want it to end up, dead center of that, and then we can press it onto this and that's gonna tell us our notch down here. And then of course we got just a standard notch up here. So let me do this real quick. Right there's where we want it. So you can see we have our notch now. So we can press very gently, ah, laser in the eyeball, freaking laser. 
do and press this out. So now we can trace this on our piece of tube here. And that's gonna be the exact shape we need to match up with that square tube. Super simple, takes just a few minutes, taking this longer, of course, because we're filming it, but you know how it do be though. So I did push some of my pins. I messed with that, but that's the way it needs to be. And you can also press them down right here. Okay, that's gonna be good. So now I can go from this end, slide my piece of tube in it and trace that puppy and go cut it out with a grinder. This is a scrap piece of tube that I had. It's gonna work out real nice, Clark. Maybe you can see that, but that's how we have to cut it out. This is not going to be the right length. What we can do to find out where we need to come in with our notch is measure from the edge to the center of the tube and then mark that, you know, measure from here to the center where we want this notch to come in, re-notch it. Like I said, this is just a scrap piece. And of course, I can't lay it down in there like I want to because it's too long. But once I lay it down in there, this notch will meet up perfectly. So go ahead and measure for that. And this is going to be kind of hard to do. We're going to go for nine inches to start with. We might have to re-notch a little bit. That looks like it's the right length, actually. Oh, how am I going to get you in there? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to knock down this uh, lip right here.
Guys, thank you so much for watching today's video. Uh, just wanted to show how I go about making a certain set of spindles. Now, every one of our chassis are different, so we can't just use these spindles for everything. Uh, well, we could if we built our chassis to spec to this, uh, you know, dimensions. But I like to change every chassis up just because it gives you more challenges and helps you, in my opinion, become a better fabricator. But I want to say a massive shout out to the sponsors of this build. Go Power Sports sent out a ton of parts to be putting on this chassis because they're trying to use a lot of affordable parts to see what we can achieve with like uh, go-kart style shocks and stuff on this chassis. And uh, we use that one and a quarter chrome ollie race cart axle from Go Power Sports. That's our stub axle. We might switch it out with a like a six blind axle because I'm really scared that one key won't be enough to hold this power, but we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. Centurial donated the engine. Massive shout out to them. Their tools has helped out a ton in how fast I can fabricate. Uh, they're really cheap. And if you have a 3D printer, you can actually download the schematics to their tools and print them right out. And you can buy like the pins and stuff from them to save you money because all they're trying to do is get people out in their garage building and that's awesome in our opinion also massive shout out to this mini dictator that thing has made making those spindles was way easier having that belt sander this thing freaking eats steel like nobody's business i love having this thing we're getting a table set up over here uh, very soon a steel table to mount all this stuff on so we don't have to waste tape you know table space on our weld table with our vice and everything uh, but that's to come but yeah let me know what you think about these spindles they're 3 16 for the sidewalls that's 3 16 and we capped them off with eighth inch so they're not too heavy but they're super beefy i always overbuild stuff than underbuild it and we went with eighth inch tabs this time and i'm going to make them box tabs that's why they're shaped like they are they're going to be fully boxed in and super strong but lighter than quarter inch thick tabs would have been so uh, super pumped about this build guys make sure to check out all the links in the video description they help us continue to do these videos we'll have the a-arm video out hopefully next week where we build the full a-arm setup and we won't be able to mount the shocks until it's actually on the ground but we'll get all the a-arms built and the shock mounts made and uh, then we can move on to the front we had to do the rear first so we could use standard length miata cv axles and not have to cut them or anything buy off the shelf parts to replace it so uh, thanks so much check out those links we love you guys and god bless